<laughs> you want to respond to what we were saying about, you know, tough guys walking around with their pit bulls and... Well, you know, I am a tough guy. My whole body's tattooed. We, cause we're tattoo <laughs> artists in Atlanta. You're and, a tough guy, uh, huh? Yeah, I see, it, I see it constantly. Unfortunately, that's why so many of the uh, shelters are flooded with them because, you know, big macho guys or, or, or whatever buy the dog thinking, wow, I'm going to get the biggest, meanest, coolest guard dog ever. But pit bulls are not and have never been human aggressive. It's not part of their, their breeding or their genetics. Um, they're exploited for their animal aggression um, that is trained in them by the, the bad people, but they, they aren't human aggressive. So what happens is people buy this guard dog. It doesn't guard anything. It just licks you when you walk in. <laughs> and uh, then they, they dump the dog and oh. end up getting some other kind of dog. So then here we go with another 10 million dogs because uh, oh. they, they weren't as aggressive as they look. They are very strong dogs, and I think that, that that has a lot to do with why they're used in fighting, just because they're little tanks, you know, and, and they'll do anything for their owner. So, so they are perfect for that if you're, you know, twisted weirdo. But ironically, if you look back at like all the 80s movies and stuff, it was always Dobermans, you know, and, and then it was Rottweilers, right. and now right. it's Pitbulls. Um, I, think, I think it's almost just a trendy, kind of, what's the worst dog of this decade? Well, yeah. right now we're in the middle of the pit bull situation, and uh, we're just doing everything we can to, to help dispel that. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been thinking a lot about tattoos lately. We have to have you on another show about why everybody's getting tattoos. So, let's but that's do another it. subject. All right, let's do it. We'll do that. Let's go to Bonnie in Madison, and then we'll switch guests here. Hi, Bonnie. Oh, hi, Kathleen. Well, thanks for having the show. <laughs> I think I like to make a statement, too, when I walk my pit bull because I'm a grandmother and, and I'm retired. And so I think maybe if more older people got pit bulls, it might take away from some of the mystique. Right. Um, I'd like to ask the guest maybe to expand a, just a little bit more on the personality of the pit bull because I think they're basically a combination of the two dogs they've been bred from, which is they're sweet like bulldogs, but they're very energetic like terriers. And I think that's another reason a lot of them wind up in pounds because they're so energetic. And I think mine is digging a hole to China in the backyard. <laughs> and how did you happen to get him, Bonnie? Well, I just saw it on the internet on Pet Finder, and uh, she was in a high kill shelter about ready to be gassed. Oh. So I sent an application, but mine is just adorable. Oh. They're not big. They're only like about they're medium sized dogs, and she sits in my lap and oh. uh, tries to sit in my lap, and then puts her face right against mine when I'm sitting on the couch. Oh, I love these stories. Jim, do you want to... Re Thank you so much, Bonnie, for calling. Jim? Well, yeah, I mean, part of the response to that is... is and what was really sort of groundbreaking about this case and, and what, what we get into in the Lost Dogs is that you, you can't, in a way, make those generalizations. Yeah, you can say some general things there, the bulldog and the terrier, so they have sort of a, a drive working thing, but the big, sweet dog... But, but what they did here that was really radical is that instead of saying, there's a group of fighting dogs, fighting pit bulls, we should kill them all, they said, you know what, let's take this group of dogs and look at them all individually mm -hmm. and figure out if there are any of them that we can save. And, and that was a really, that's the kind of thing that was never done before. And so this ASPCA team came in and they looked at each dog individually and sure enough, out of the 51, they saved 47. And as you go forward, that, that's sort of a theme that continues. Is, you know, at this point, you can't look back and say, the Vic dogs are this or the Vic dogs are that. You have to say, you know, Machiavelli is this, Jasmine is that. You know, they're all individuals now, and that's really what has saved them and brought them to this point. And so you have to sort of carry that through and say, yeah, okay, there's some general things you can say about the breed one way or the other. But really, it's dog by dog. And you have to, whether it's a poodle or whether it's a chihuahua or whether exactly. it's a pitbull, you have to look at them all separately and say, who's this dog and what's he all about? Um, and so as much as there are some really great general things about the pit bull, you know, more so I think the idea that, you know, forget the breed, look at the dog is a bigger message. Yeah. Thank you, Bonnie, so much. Uh, you, if you have access to Facebook, we'd love to see your dog, too. If you can post a picture, that would be... This is a day to post dog pictures. I don't know. You should do that if you can. Um, Brandon, thank you so much for, for being with us. Um, and we'll be in touch with you to talk about tattoos, if you don't mind. 
bring it on. I'd love to send you a copy of our documentary as well. So oh, we'll great. Sure okay. You guys get one of those. It's it's easy. It's just bigdogmovie.com, and we're donating all the money to save more of them. So, What's uh, Vic Dog Movie? Bigdogmovie.com. That's com. it. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. See, I snuck in a plug right there because they wouldn't let me, so I plugged it anyway. <laughs>